You think you know me? Rated M gang in the building. What's good with y'all, man? It's your boy Mo. So, you seen the title? WWE match type so dangerous they could unalive you. I'm not gonna say the other word. I just started getting some YouTube money. I'm not trying to get demonetized under any circumstances. So we're gonna be careful today. But yeah, this was requested by Christian Fuente. Shout out to you, my boy. Big supporter, man. I love you, bro. Uh, this is made by Tap Out Corner. Shout out to Tap Out Corner. And uh, yeah, let's get straight to it. Uh, Inferno match is definitely probably like the most dangerous. Like you're literally going through fire. Like you're going straight through fire. So if if something gets messed up and in the production, I mean, you, you can get unalived. Do you feel me? But yeah, uh, like, comment, share, subscribe. Follow me on the socials, man. Let's get straight to it, man. Let's go. Wrestling by itself is already really dangerous. Oh, big facts. Sure, the fights would be choreographed, but the stunts are real, and one mistake can result in someone losing a tooth or even oh, having their that. neck broken. Uh, to keep fans watching, WWE is continuously creating Biggie. new match types. The most exciting ones are, unfortunately, usually the most dangerous ones. Some of these are such high risk that WWE has been forced to make them safer or even ban them outright. Yep, one of the yep. most painful and unforgiving matches in WWE is the Elimination Chamber. Oh, for sure. The original chamber that debuted in 2002 weighed 10 tons it was made out of steel it looked like an awesome structure but it was not awesome for those who had to yeah. wrestle in it there was no padding so landing on the metal <sighs> building outside Man. the ring always hurt the other thing that made the elimination chamber dangerous was its height and shape wrestlers mm. were able to climb to the top of the chamber pods but there wasn't much space to move around yeah, this made like it difficult to hit high flying moves properly Rob Van Dam infamously landed on Triple H's throat <laughs> during the first elimination chamber match because he had to crouch while on Man, if I was Triple H, because he went to the hospital. If I was him, as soon as I got out of the hospital, when I see Rob Van Dam, it's on sight. Like, God damn, bro. Like, I know it's an accident, but, like, you crush my trachea, like, my throat, bro. Pause. It's a fade. That's all I'm going to say. It's a fade, About bro. 15 years later, in 2017, WWE yep, redesigned yep. the Elimination Chamber. The chamber is made taller, making it easier for wrestlers to perform moves from on top of the pods. Right. WWE also added padding, which made landing on the steel structure less painful. <laughs> Just from its name, it's clear why the first blood oh, match man. poses such a risk. The goal oh, of the match yeah, is to make your opponent the first to bleed by any yeah, means necessary. Man. The match is already dangerous because of the use of weapons, but the real danger comes from the open wound. Yep, to bleed... Yep. Wrestlers do actually cut their heads, usually using a small razor blade they hide in their boot or that a referee will give to them secretly. This can lead to infection, both for the wrestler with the open cut and yeah, anyone who I comes even, in contact with the blood. I didn't even think this about might that. be why WWE hasn't done a first blood match since 2008. Now, wrestlers mm. have blood in other matches, but since someone needs to be busted wide open to win a first blood match, that's the reason it is so dangerous. Yeah. The latter match. Hey, I know this match is not an Inferno. Uh, I keep talking about Inferno matches. It's not a first blood match, but. But the match with Eddie and JBL, I think it was Judgment Day 04, where like there was like a, it looked like a damn massacre, bro. Eddie and JBL were bleeding all over the place, like because they bladed the wrong way. I, I think like Eddie, I think someone I read somewhere that Eddie cut into a, like an artery or something like that, and like it made him like gush a whole lot of like the red fluid you know what i'm saying so yeah man first blood match is like when you're purposefully trying to do that it's risky it's risky is many people's favorite match in all of wrestling part of the reason is because of the high risk the match presents yep. to win a ladder match a wrestler has to grab whatever is hanging above the ring usually mm -hmm. a championship yep, yep. while ladder matches can kind of be as dangerous as the wrestlers involved want them to be right. there is always a certain level of risk <laughs> simply because you have to climb above the ring to win Yard, another reason dumb. is due to how the ladder matches evolved over the years most ladder matches usually involve big high risk Ooh. stunts which the fans have come to expect to see oh for sure this makes the match less safe and we've seen many wrestlers suffer some painful injuries due to spots going oh, wrong man dean ambrose got a cut on Bruh, first of all hopefully like i know rick flair was okay because you know it, it, that was like 16 years ago but why they have that old ass man in that match he was at least 85 years old at that point why you have him in a damn money in the bank ladder match that's probably Rick's idea, crazy ass. Head at WrestleMania 31 when he got powerbombed through a ladder outside of the Ooh, ring. Wait. Of course, Joey Mercury's oh, horrific yeah. facial injury in Chosen 6 shows exactly how wrong a ladder match can go. Mm -mm. Another popular match type is Hell in a Cell. The ring is surrounded by a course, giant steel course, cage, and as the name implies, 
all hell breaks loose. <laughs> Similar to the latter match, Hell in a Cell can sort of be as dangerous or as safe as wrestlers want to make it. That's facts. However, the cell has caused so many injuries that it can't be ignored. Yeah. Of course, the most famous oh, is Mankind man. getting thrown off the structure in 1998 and accidentally falling through the top of the cell later in the match. Shane McMahon did something similar when he- Listen, bro. I know we talk about it all the time as wrestling fans and as wrestling content creators, bro. But Mick Foley, for real, this tooth went up into his nose. He got knocked out temporarily. Obviously, he was bleeding all over the place. Went through thumbtacks. And then he came out later in the night to do something else with Kane and Austin in that first blood match. Much love to Mick Foley, bro. Formed an elbow drop from the top of Hell in a Cell Much love at WrestleMania to Mick Foley, 32. Bro. The impact caused McMahon's had bone button to get blown point. out, among other injuries. Oh. In 2000, Rikishi fell straight down onto a truck and injured his hip, which never fully recovered. Really? Even non-wrestlers aren't safe. Oh, yeah, at Judgment Day 2002, yeah. Chris Jericho fought Triple H inside Hell in a Cell. The referee, Tim White, got shoved into the wall of the cell, resulting in him injuring his shoulder yeah. and ending his career. It's Easily the most dangerous match type in I WWE said it, history gang. I said it. is the Inferno match. It's crazy. How an Inferno match works <clears throat> is that the rain is surrounded by fire. That's already pretty dangerous, but what makes the match so risky is that the only way to win is by setting your opponent on fire. Right. There are no tricks either. A wrestler is engulfed by real flames. That's fire crazy. is extremely dangerous to work with because the smallest mistake can result in serious injuries or even death. Fire can also spread fairly easily, also making it a risk. Here's the thing, bro. I'm kind of glad they stopped doing Inferno matches anyway. Number one is dangerous. That's the most important part. But the matches ain't even good for real, bro. Like, name me one good Inferno match. You can't. Like, the only time I've enjoyed an Inferno match is when I'm playing it and I got a remote in my hand. That's it, bro everyone nearby. That's why WWE has only ever done five Inferno matches in the company's entire history. Like, in 2013, Kane fought Bray Wyatt in a Ring of Fire match. It was similar to an Inferno match, but nobody was set on fire, right. and Wyatt won via pinfall. In 2020, Pointless. Bray Wyatt, as the Fiend, fought Randy Orton in a man. Firefly Inferno match. We love you, Bray. The fire was placed on the barricade and not the edge of the ring, making the match much safer. The match was also filmed and broadcast later, and no fans were in attendance. I will the say Fiend it was did get set on fire, but all these precautions made the most recent Inferno match safer than the previous ones. It's unlikely WWE will ever do an Inferno match again, but if they we do, it. it'll likely be similar to what Orton and The Fiend did, or the Reign of Fire match. Right. Which WWE weapons are the safest, and which are the most dangerous? We rank them, and the results will surprise you. Mm, interesting, interesting. Right, I might have to check that one out. I'm kind of curious about that, but no. That was a great video by Tap Out Corner. Shout out to Christian Fuentes for the request again. Uh, yeah, like I said, Inferno match, bro. You're literally going through some fire. Like, it's just, there's nothing safe about that, bro. But now, I forgot about the ladder match. The ladder match is my, my favorite stipulation, right? And <laughs> if you fall down the wrong way, the mat's not trampoline, bro. You're going you, you to get hurt. You're going to get hurt. But not. Uh, appreciate y'all for watching. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Follow me on the social medias, man. Appreciate y'all for watching. I don't know. If, I think I just said that twice, but yeah. <laughs> See you on the next one. Peace.